Did I hit record? <laughs> record? No. Did I hit record? It's recording. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just recording it. It's got all the juices. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Alive. It's alive. Welcome to the Black Lincoln Collective Podcast. Oh, this is gonna be fun. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'll make it fun. With your host, Parker. Featuring the sultry sounds of Fred and also Alan on the board. Now, let's start the damn show. I forgot about it, and then I was like, oh, yeah. About it. That's probably why you got fired. You're like, do I have a job? <laughs> anyway, welcome to the 108th edition of the Blackling Collective Podcast. We are so, so glad you joined us. Fred really needs you to donate to our Patreon. I need it. It is his only source of income now. It's a GoFundMe. So, uh, well, yeah, welcome to the show. Uh, I got to remove my thing now that I didn't write yet. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the 108th edition of the Black Lincoln Collective Podcast. I had such a good thing, and now you really you, you threw me off so bad. Well, I was say, the, the only, only podcast that doesn't do podcasts <laughs> right. No, that's... <laughs> I was going to say, we're the only podcast to come out and officially endorse Popcorn with Butter. There you go. I love it. <laughs> we're so glad you joined us, and we appreciate your support so very much. Thanks you can keep up with us at blcpodcast.com. <laughs> and please drop us a like. Never. A like or a follow on X, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, our TikTok and YouTube too. Why not? Uh, yeah. Rate us on your favorite podcast platform. Tell your friends. We also have a Patreon, which Fred will be <laughs> emptying out after the show. <laughs> <laughs> and we are, of course, broadcast on the Pop Culture Pros Network. Check them out at popculturepros.com. And now, our season salt. There it is. The <laughs> season salt of our show. It's Fred. It's me. Hey, the jobless guy. Just want to uh, say, if anybody's wow. hiring, hit us up at blacklincolncollective.com, blc.world. It's not, our, it's not our website at all. <laughs> you can get fired from here before you hit BLC. The yeah, you might lose two in one day. BLC TikTok. Get a job. Hashtag get a job. And as always, I'd like to introduce my man. Just give it. The guy with the Alan. job. Fuck the you. guy that got me that job. I don't know that job. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> hey, water boy. You're I was going to accuse you of. Oh, I'm not going to. All right. Well, welcome to the show, Fred. I'm so glad that you're in a jovial mood. Yeah. You've been taking some pretty hard L's lately. Hey, man. But, it's got to laugh. To keep from crying. If you don't laugh, you cry. That's right. Fred, that's it. That's I've it. got the cure Uh-oh. for all these L's you've been taking. I bet you don't. You I, bet, I, I bet I personally don't. But I can tell you who does. <laughs> okay. Our dear friends, Ace and Tyler. When they hit the books podcast. They are oh, about boom. to join us whenever Alan does his job. What's Thanks. up? Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here. So as yeah. you heard, you, you're getting the breaking news just like we're getting the breaking news. Fred has no chance of having a job. That's right. So so he's going to need all the help. help he can get. You're going to have to walk him through what bets Let he needs him. to make. Keep his family Let alive. Let me get a pin. I got $2 to invest. I need to flip that. Two to four. <laughs> what you four to eight. eight. <laughs> eight to sixteen. Don't you start like by, by the end of football season? I'm a millionaire. Come on, guys. There you go. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll see what we can bad. do. I I appreciate you having us on again. My name is Tyler Huffnagel. That's my buddy Ace. Uh, we're from the Hit the Books podcast. The podcast we started. <clears throat> Excuse me, just over uh, two years ago. We're going on our two-year anniversary right now, right. going into our third season with the NFL coming right around the corner. We cover all kinds of sports from college football to the NFL. We take things on the ice. We're four former hockey players, three of us former college hockey players, me and Ace from West Virginia. Um, we do all things in the NHL, NBA, college basketball. If you name it, we bet on it. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the baseball going on right now, so um, especially with Messi coming into the soccer world, so a lot going on in the American sports world. A lot going on to bet on. Uh, Ace, I don't know if you want to give a little background on yourself, but uh, before we get too much into things. Fuck y'all yeah, no. 
Off, uh, <laughs> not too bad, but um, no, like you said, sorry to hear about that news as we came uh, in. Good, bro. You got better days ahead, and uh, hopefully we can we can help spark that. I know I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm what they call a commodity. I'm a rare commodity. You know they don't know you, Fred, because they're like, yeah, better days ahead. And we're like, well, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Nice though, yeah. yeah. See that ass on OnlyFans in a week. <laughs> Shit. Hey, that's, I gotta that's, wait that's for a week. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, and we're canceled too. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, thank hey, you guys. I say, go ahead. Give, please give, feel give free to introduce yourself. yourself. Yeah, introduce yourself, Ace. Hey. Yeah, no, uh, like Hoff said, I'm coming out of the New England area up in Rhode Island, so got a different take on everything that a lot of the boys do. Like, we come fr- at you from different areas. We got a buddy up in Long Island. I'm from Rhode Island. Then our producer and Huff are both coming out of Pittsburgh. So a lot okay. of different viewpoints, but get some good uh, conversation and go at it here from time to time with our teams. Uh, hopefully better days ahead for them as well. So There you go. <laughs> Speaking of islands, I was on Jeffrey Epstein's album. <laughs> Did not end well. That's a weird, uh, weird transition, Fred. Great. <laughs> so this is how you know that this is not scripted. Um, yeah. So because Fred says some weird shit sometimes. Off the cuff. So uh, like you said, you guys cover everything, basically every sport that has a ball. <laughs> or um, and so what's you guys preferred? I know you. We were talking a little bit before the show, of course, and you said you know baseball may not be you guys' strong suit. But baseball, I think I feel like baseball is such a hard sport to gamble on because it's just so there's so many games. Yeah, absolutely. And Ace, if you want to take this question, he's kind of he's kind of our big guy in baseball. Like I said, he's he's got his Red Sox to root for year in and year out. I'm more of a casual baseball guy. But uh, as we get towards the MLB offseason or uh, postseason, that's something I get really excited for. MLB playoffs is must see TV. So, Ace, if you want to kind of answer that question, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of been blessed. My Red Sox didn't do too hot before I was born, but I walked right into some <laughs> dynasties all over New England. Can't complain yeah, at all. Yeah, sure. um, still relevant to this day, despite Wouldn't all matter. odds. But no, um, yeah, with the baseball season, you got to be locked in every day. It's really about those pitching matchups that we look into. Um, playing some fantasy baseball helps with that too, but watching a lot of it on MLB TV, following it as I can. I, I look at those big-name teams. You see the, the Dodgers year in and year out. You're going to take them every time you can because they're going to put up big runs, and you can really have your money safe with them. It's like betting on the Chiefs or uh, some of those other powerhouses across the other leagues. Or so betting against the Jets. Yeah, yeah <laughs> generally Hopefully speaking, it's the same this year. Generally yeah, speaking, speaking of like fantasy baseball, did you know that's like where it all started? Like all the fantasy started was from fantasy baseball. Actually, I yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that. No, I've been yeah. I've played fantasy baseball the past two seasons, and honestly, like I don't play any other fantasy sports other than football and baseball, and that's just because I like the football during the season and the baseball right. fantasy baseball kind of gives me something to root for in the off season when I'm not yeah. Right. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. It just kind of gives it's me something hard, to do though. this summer. It is hard. It's a grind to yeah. keep up with, but yeah. it is a lot Especially of fun. You no, got, I didn't like, know that was the original. Yeah, yeah. It was like a group of friends out of New York, like uh, came up with like the concept, and they would like. Like, um, get the paper every day and, and like the commissioner would have to go through the paper and like write down offhand. all the That's stats up. yeah all the stats offhand and then like yeah I think like Yahoo started like they picked it up and like started doing it like that and they took them to court but they never copyrighted the game yep so they never got any money off and of they it. didn't have the money to go after him for it. Yeah, 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 they didn't yeah. have mm-hmm. the money to go after Yahoo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that like they got sense. they got really screwed. They they made some money off of like books they wrote and stuff like that. So but like yeah, they, they really yeah, got screwed off of that. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely because fantasy football is obviously the one that you know most people think yeah. when they hear fantasy right. sports, they think of fantasy football because I, I, I do yeah. one for every season. You got to kind of just yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. at least, at least one, guys, at least one. Oh, you mean every for, sport, like every yeah, sport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Hockey, football, right. baseball. I hit the floor. Yeah, I try to do oh. like I try to do like a fantasy team for like golf because like. I'm not a. I like golf. I like it a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I me. suck at it, but like I like to watch it, like the pros and stuff like that. That's awesome. And I yeah. try to do a. I try to do a, a fantasy golf league, and I just got crushed, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like real golf. Yeah, yeah just like real golf. <laughs> 
But yeah, no, I find like a way to follow it throughout for every sport. You go with a dynasty league. We've kind of introduced those here with some baseball. Mm-hmm. I got some in basketball and like year three, some football too. So yeah. obviously football, you mix it up with redraft and both. But the other league. Like our fantasy ball. league, man, how how long have we like it's uh, not dynasty because like we, 10 years we, almost, a draft. Doing... we tried to do dynasty for like three years. I, I tried to make us do dynasty and never right. no one else would do it. No, I, mean, I just didn't like it. Man. They're like, know. oh, you have to Keep remember it. who we had. A like, compromise oh, no. to it. That was the thing about our league, though. Nobody liked to trade. Nobody liked to you, trade. So I love to trade. You would just never trade with me. No, because you, 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 you said I was the oppressor. You said I was the white oppressor, and I couldn't be trained and trusted. <laughs> you are the oppressor, colonizer. Try to colonize. Yeah, yeah, you're like, you can't be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we do love it. You know, it's, and at least it's the same thing, man. It, it keeps keeps it interesting. If your team sucks, you know, mm-hmm. it's one of those things. that's great that you can have something. You know, if your actual team sucks, and you can have this, hopefully, not suck as bad. Right. And it's great to you know find a, a, any kind of source of shit talk you can generate throughout exactly. the year is always nice. With yeah, 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 exactly. So but yeah, I guess so, to get back to your original question, football. Football is probably our all of our football. main go to. I know we're all hockey players, but Ace, I think right. it's safe to say football is all our favorite to watch. But probably hockey's right there as a close second. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I crushed the card. I like on the card this year. NHL, MLB was probably my strong suit, but in depth analysis, NFL for sure. There you go. There you go. Well, we're going to get and, to some NFL talk here real soon because we have um, our, we're on a, a, a network actually at a, at a Long Island, uh, the Pop Culture Pros Network, and um, they do a yearly. Uh, I guess it's like their football pick 'em, where we have to, you know, you have you come up with all the division winners and all the, you know, every, and kind of you have to map out the season. So we're gonna um, we're gonna rely on you guys to help us do that here momentarily, and if you awesome. fuck it up. <laughs> uh, nothing will really happen. <laughs> no, it isn't our money. No. We're going to break Fred's legs. How about that? Yeah. He's already he's had a bad enough string of luck. Yeah. We'll just throw his legs in there, too. You don't need those anymore, Fred. I don't need your legs. <laughs> so, your legs. Do you guys uh, do any college football, too? Or is that, I know that's not necessarily. We're, we're down here, like I said, in the Southeast. So college football is. The SEC. For the, that's right. No, the, no, no, the no. SEC. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm quitting the show. Yeah, I'm firing myself from the show if you keep talking about the fucking <laughs> SEC. But uh, so we are uh, – We're college football is like our thing down here. That's what mm-hmm. people love. You know, that's what they, they fucking wake up and fall asleep to constantly. There, There is a, a literal buzz in the air down here with football and right. college football about to start this week. Yeah. Um, so do you guys cover any of that or do you kind of just more state of the pros? Yeah, mo- oh, definitely. I'd say we more state of the pros uh, this week. Uh, we didn't really dive into too much of the week one lines for uh, this coming weekend, but I know some of the big matchups, obviously my West Virginia Mountaineers are in uh, Penn State. That's a pretty big one up here. Uh, my wife's team. I was going to say, renewing that rivalry, I think it's a uh, Penn State's a 20 and a half uh, point favorite in that one. Penn State, I mean, they're seventh coming into the season, seventh in the nation. So uh, me, not the biggest Penn State guy. My my buddy, Jesse, our producer, he is a, he's a Penn State alumni. So he's our Penn State correspondent. But I do think my Mountaineers are going to get that ass kicking this this weekend, unfortunately. <laughs> Fred, I like, like uh, yeah. yeah, I like Penn State with the points there uh, to give you a pick in the college world this weekend. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So on, on a more global scale, do you guys have any? And like I said, so we're going to hit a couple of different sports, but we'll start off with college football because, you know, again, and this is Fred start writing because you need hey. this. Do you guys have, in your guys' opinion, you know, any dark horse playoff teams this year, any dark horse championship teams potentially? As far as or college? Too early to tell, you think? As far as college? Yeah, as far as college, yeah. <laughs> so we were talking this last week a bit. Yeah, I was going to say we were getting into this last week. So at least in my opinion, with the college football, the way it is, the way it's shaped right now with the top four, I mean, it's basically I think Georgia's a lock for that one. I mean, they're scheduled, they're, that cake right. walk schedule they're going to have. Yeah. I don't see them losing. Yeah, Fred. <laughs> I'll let you guys do, do, do that one out, but uh, I think Georgia walks to a perfect season this year and gets to that uh, number one seed going into the season. I'm really big on Michigan this year. I think Blake Corum and yeah. Donovan Edwards, what they're doing up there in the Big Ten, yeah. um, it's going to be interesting to see what Ohio State does with, I think his name's Kyle McCord coming in under center with uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. out there on the wide out, but Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not huge yeah. on Ohio State this year. I, I'm more big on this. Yeah, I like Penn State to cause some problems between uh, Michigan and I Ohio State so. to beat up one of them too, and maybe knock them out of that top four. But um, as far as that, it's too. It's hard to. I feel like it's so hard to call these dark horses in college football because the sure, way it all sure. it all works out. I just um, want you to say Clemson ain't got a shot. Clemson uh, has a great shot, Fred. Clemson. 
Clemson's Don't they're they're gonna put up a fight in that a- ACC. I can tell you that for sure. But um, as far as they I don't know, I'm DJ, right? Yeah, DJ's up. Yeah, thank play. God. As a lifelong Clemson fan myself, uh, I, he was one of the worst we've had in a long, long time. And it wasn't I, even his fault necessarily. He, he he came in at a bad time. It's hard to follow. You know, it's hard to be there and Rodgers that follows Brett Favre. It's hard yeah. to you know follow Deshaun and then Trevor Lawrence back to back and then like. He had just as much hype around him as both of them did, and unfortunately, he just wasn't going to make it. I think everybody, from a Clemson perspective, wishes him the best at Oregon State. He is—he named, he was named the starter this week or last week there. So I hope that he does great. I hope he he kills it. But if it's in like the last two years, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> We Change still love him. Might help him though. I was intrigued with the there size he had and when he stepped yeah, in for no, Lawrence and during the injury. He's got time, the so. intangibles for sure. Like he's got, you know, like I said, he's got the size. He's got he's got a hell of an arm. He's just his. I don't know. Again, I don't know if it was the system oh, got time. The got or or what, but he just he just couldn't process. I, I don't think he he wasn't able to process information as, as quickly as was necessary for for you know Clemson these last couple of years. Also, Correct. their receivers have been down a couple of years, for the last couple of years and just haven't really been getting separation. So, and yeah. it's always much harder on the quarterback if you can't you know if nobody's open. Yeah, oh, the down cool. tick and the team overall like coming off that Lawrence high, it's like so tough right. to, to live yeah. up to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just all the all the all the wide receivers and everything kind of dropped off, and that and that happens sometimes. But um, well, hold on, we're gonna take a quick break so we can get. Uh, I think Tyler may have. Uh, that's, really that's, a, that's a, like an occurring thing on this podcast. Like he got really mad at Fred. Up. We're talking about the SEC. No, they get they get snatched up, man. Like I don't know the government is snatched right off the spot. Are you following us? That, that's Fred's new job, conspiracy theorist. <laughs> right. Oh god. Yeah. I'm gonna start with that. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> so we'll take a really, really super quick break, and we'll be right back with more Black Link Collective Podcast with Hit the Books Podcast. The Black Link and Collective Podcast will return after a word from our sponsors. Conspiracy out there. You know what I'm saying? There's a conspiracy. A C O N spiracy. Welcome back to the Black Link Collective Podcast. Uh, we are so, so sorry for the technical difficulties. It was all Fred's fault. It was. I was going to blame it on Alan, but Alan could actually kick us out and ruin it. So I don't want to. Yes. <laughs> That's the only problem is you can't. Like, he's the only one who gets applause, generally speaking, because he controls the board. So he yeah. gives himself applause while the rest of us just sit quietly. No, that's the, 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 <laughs> good the, game plan. The studio. I'm I like the that. studio crowd. Right, I'm studio sorry. Yeah, I'm in our our studio, studio audience. audience. Yeah. <laughs> they love that one. A live studio audience. So, uh, so yeah, like I said, we we did we did chat a little bit about uh, college football, which is great and fine. But uh, now I really, really need you guys' help. I have a few things we got to get through here. Um, so, like I said, the Pop Culture uh, Pros Network, which is our dear friends, have challenged us along with everybody else on the network, which is mostly guys like I said up in the New York area, except for the boss man who lives in. Well, he lived in Florida. I don't know if he's still if he made it or not. Honestly, for, after this hurricane, <laughs> hurricane, but got it. I'm sure he's fine. He lives in like uh, Orlando or something. He's living nah. like hurricane uh, got Central Florida. Florida. Yeah, somewhere lame. Even from Florida. <laughs> 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 so we have this challenge. We're gonna we're gonna give this is what I would I would like us to do if it's okay. We're gonna let Fred Allen and myself try to answer this, and then you tell us if we're a hundred percent wrong. <laughs> Or if we're like, yeah, you're probably in the right direction. And give us, and of course, please feel free to debate. Feel free to call us idiots. I do it all the time. And I'm called an idiot all I'm married, so I'm called an idiot all the time, too. So it is my idiot. middle name. Right. So, <laughs> name it. it. So we're going to go through, we need division champs. Uh, and then the three wild card teams for both, both leagues. And then we also have the NFC, AFC champ, Super Bowl champ, MVP. Offensive, defensive. Jesus Christ, that's right? a lot, man. It's not that much, Fred. We're gonna we're lot. gonna plow through it, dude, because some of these are pretty easy. Plow I think. I, I mean, you know, I think. So you let's know. start with Allen's favorite division again. You know, and I know Allen's gonna say the Jets are gonna win the division this year. Yep. I, I disagree. Uh, I think the Bills are probably the odds-on favorite with Miami as like the second. But I'm gonna leave. We're gonna do this by consensus. So 
if if Fred can talk, can convince, or if Alan can convince Fred that the Jets are going to win it, they can outvote me and we'll put the Jets down. Yeah, I think the Jets but are going to win it this year. The Jets I mean, are not. Yeah, man, we did good with the draft. We did good with the trades. Hey, you got Aaron Rodgers. We got Aaron Rodgers. I mean, we're ready. We are ready hey. this year. And then you got the, the shadow hat man on your side. That's that right. Aaron Rodgers be seeing. You know, and fire yeah, man, whatever like, guy's back. <laughs> you know, and we're ready. I don't know. I, I, I myself, I love football, but I just don't know much about it. I mean, you know enough to say gonna, Miami, the Jets, or the who, who's the four teams? Come on, okay, the Jets, yep. the Dolphins, yep, the Bills, the Bills right, and, and the New England Patriots. There you go. Okay, well, I'm not going to go with New England, right? So no, you, know that. Not a <laughs> you know that. Mark them off. Uh, I, I don't know. Is Tua still in Miami? Tua is yeah. back, and he Tua learned jiu jitsu over back. the off season. See, see, I know a little yeah. bit. So he learned uh, a lot about jiu jitsu, so he could fall better. This off season. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, I'm 100 serious. Okay. It is true. It is true. Yeah. It, it is true. Okay, I like that. Then you know what I'm saying. So yeah, maybe I don't know. I, I like Miami. I'll it take the Dolphins. I mean, I'll, I'm willing to go Dolphins, Dolphins. I, again. That's so this good. has to be. Oh, we have to. This has to be a consensus. Like no, we all two out have of three. To. So we said Dolphins. Jets are out. They could be, but they could they can land the wild card spot. Okay. So um, that's we're, that's. Sorry, that's personally, uh, that's kind of how I'm thinking I mean, things could work out. I mean, of Go course, ahead. I'm going to say the Jets, but I'm thinking Bills. Okay. The Bills are the safe wrong. pick. Bills are the safe pick, but that's real. Yeah. We're not I don't here. Know. And I do team. like the Bills because I, I have the Miami Dolphins. Great they, value, they come so close every time. Like, they got to have to some kind health. of fire right. in their belly to, like, what was my man name from the last Boy Scout? Like, if they don't get it, they just pull out the pistols and start shooting people. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Billy Cole. Billy Cole. They go Billy Cole somebody if they don't fuck with it. You know the Bills or the Dolphins? Bills, yeah. The okay, Bills. Yeah. The if Bills the Bills don't win it this Billy year, Cole. they're. I think this is the last year that their window, the championship window. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. They the got yeah. slam shut. Right. Yep. Exactly. Hey, I'm on. I'm with. I'm with. Cause I I, th- I like the value in this Miami Dolphins team. If you can find them, I think we found them at three to one to win the division. Oh yeah. Uh, I like. Mm. I like some of the pieces they addressed. They brought in guys like Jalen Ramsey. They right. defense down there. Uh, t- like he said, pending to his health, that team could. I have. I'm for me. I think their ceiling is a is a possible Super Bowl appearance, in my opinion, for the Miami mm. Dolphins this year. There you go. Then mine, friend. All right. So if we're gonna skip to Miami. We're going to go to two that should be, I think, pretty easy to, to answer. Uh, okay. The AFC South is, I mean, it's the Jaguars division to lose. Block. Yeah, I agree 100%. Hmm. We're going Jaguars. For, oh, wait, oh, oh, who do you think, Brad? Who else is it? Uh, Tennessee, need, okay. Tennessee. 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 Yeah. Uh, Indianapolis. Indianapolis, okay. Houston. Nah. And, he, nah, it's not gonna and the Jaguars. Yeah, okay. So it's just going to be Jaguars, yeah. yeah. You don't okay. think Tennessee can pull something out of there? I really don't. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I would like. Hey, I like DeAndre Hopkins. I hey. like Mike Vrabel, and yeah, yeah, I like Mike Vrabel. I mean, you know, out of all, probably out of all the like expatriate like players who turn to coaches, and he's plus probably my music. favorite one. Catch music. I mean, but your boy Trevor Lawrence is taking the next step this year. Yeah. There you go. I feel like I feel like this is really you know. Well, he, his first year wasn't his first year, so did he play in Room of the Titans? Urban Meyer year doesn't count. Yeah, Urban Meyer no. does not. Count for anybody. I mean, so that's the thing. Year. ETN this comes into is, is coming team. into his own. You know, Lawrence is coming into his own. They got Calvin Ridley, who is dominant, even though well, he's the obviously been gone for a year. Defense. Yeah, right. and their defense has been great for well, their defense has been passable too great for like twelve years. They just never had anything on the offensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. So I, I have no doubt the Jaguars are, be, are the team. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. bankrupt. Mm-hmm. Calvin's going to be there too. I'm telling you, man, I, I think he's coming out fired up. He said I he's a reach on him in my fantasy he said draft. He said he's coming back to get everything he lost last year. Yeah, well, true, ga- true gambler's lot. mentality. There you <laughs> go. Just went back. Down, baby. Hey, I don't blame him. So, okay, so we'll go to the AFC West. Fred, do you need to know who's in the AFC West? No, I can tell it you. Doesn't who's matter. In the AFC West because it's going to be the Cardinals. That's the NFC. They're not in the AFC West. Right. Sorry. That's what you meant. You were saying they're not in the AFC. The Broncos. The Broncos. You think the Broncos are going to do Broncos? something with Sean Payton? I think so. Yeah. Sean Payton and. Um, oh, my God. We're going to lose. Big Nose Russell. 
Yeah, oh, big nose of Russell. That's mean. That's yeah. Russ's boy. Yeah. That's my, that's my boy, it? Russ. I love Russell Wilson. I was a big yeah. Seahawks guy. I like See? him. Like, See? Uh, I do. It's, I it's have the Chiefs to win this division. It's, it's tough. Chief, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the Chiefs to buy in a runway. Oh, yeah, I knew the Chiefs. Yeah. Of course it's the Chiefs. Fred. The Chiefs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's All right, we're putting Chiefs. Yeah. Chiefs. yeah. Do I, I like we'll, Chiefs. Maybe we'll reserve the Broncos for, you know, for uh, the wild, wild card. card. It's not a wild card, maybe. maybe right. So I can now see that the, as well, yeah. The division that's close to, closest to my heart as a Steelers fan, and I know the answer, so I'm not. I'm going to try and not be biased. The NFC South. What the fuck, Fred? What do you do here? <laughs> the AFC North. <laughs> this is a comedy show, by the way, gentlemen. If you could uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So I've intentionally uh, fucking this up. I mean, but if you like sports and hate, <laughs> like, anger, like to laugh. this is the right show for you. If you, want, if you want to punch your radio, listen to this show because uh, Fred will make you do it. So the AFC North, I, of course, want in my heart of hearts for the Steelers to be the champions of the AFC North. I'm afraid that they will not. Uh, maybe next year, maybe in a couple years when Joe Burrow is dead. Um, <laughs> but Or, I mean, he doesn't have to be dead. He could just be hurt. But if he is dead, that's a better chance for us. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just being realistic. Yeah, yeah. I'm the guy. You're not man. wrong about that. Right. So, I mean, I, I got to think it's the Bengals. Yeah. What do you, what do you I, guys I think? I was going to say, I, I think it's the Bengals. So, like me, like I said, me being a Steelers fan, I have all the hope in the world for this Steelers team. I think you can get good value on them to win this division, but I do have Lamar Jackson and the Ravens to win this division. I actually, really? we just got done, we just got done doing our week zero stuff where we went through all of our win totals and stuff like that. So, uh, I actually have the Steelers and the Ravens both ending the season at eleven and six. Uh, so it's going to come down to the divisional wins, who wins, uh, what games. I and the Steelers and Ravens love to split. The AFC North loves oh, to yeah. split their games. Uh, so I think it's going to come down to a weird tiebreaker. Or whatever that second tiebreaker is after the divisional matchup. I think it's divisional record. So uh, we'll have to see what it comes down to. But I see the Ravens and the Steelers both getting 11 wins with the Bengals right behind them at 10. Yeah, I'm, I'm more on the Bengals or the Ravens there. Bengals are the safe play. But I think Lamar, if he's healthy and that team's healthy, they could pop off. Yeah. But I hate the Ravens so much. Can't I just vote with my heart for once? I don't, I don't I just, like his I brains. hate the Ravens. No, I it's, not the, it's not Lamar Jackson. <laughs> it's the Ravens. <laughs> It's, it's the whole Ravens Evan organization from top Stadium. to bottom. <laughs> yeah. I hate him so much. I'm right there with they you. Get better, yeah. They get under my skin as well. They're a good uh, team, good. but yeah. That's the worst part is that they're not. They're actually really competitive every year, no matter what yeah. happens. They're such exactly. a competitive all the way. Mm-hmm. They find so a way. So, exactly. all right. So, I, I've cast my vote on the Bengals. What do you guys think, Alan and Fred? Uh. And we've heard you've heard the experts. I, 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 hey, I ride with the Bengals. I like the Bengals, man. I was in Cincinnati one time and I saw for good uh, reason. Yeah, but yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Cincinnati once. Bengals, let's go, baby. Man, I, I went there one time and I saw uh, what's my man? Night move, Bob Seger. I went and saw Bob Seger in Cincinnati. So yeah, let's go to Bengals. Bob Seger says, "Go Bengals." <laughs> <laughs> A lot of love for the LSU like, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys probably like. I mean, I'm being overridden on this. But I, I, well, who do you think? Right? I, I would be right, yeah. Baltimore, Baltimore before or before us. Baltimore. Okay. See. Fuck it. I'm going against Matt. Baltimore. All right, yeah, I went to Baltimore. All right, we'll, we'll go with the Ravens. <laughs> hey, it's hurt. No way. Way. It does. Yeah, All right, but they, no like way. they say, the Ravens, man, you just every year they just yeah. they're good. They make them so healthy. They could be one. And Ray Lewis had that dance. Ray Lewis had that dance. Oh That's yeah, it. yeah. If they're healthy, if they can somehow keep their running back room like off of crutches for a year, yeah. I, I mean, I don't. And now they actually have wide receivers and OBJ and stuff like that. I don't know what they, yeah, what's holding them back flowers? from Beckham's from up, being Beckham's up there, right? Beckham's up. There. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, OBJ. Yeah. 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 So okay, so we have the Dolphins, Ravens, Jags, and Chiefs as our division winners, and okay. then we're going to our wild card teams. I am. I, we're each going to pick a wild card team. Oh, That's how was, we're doing this. Okay. So I'm taking the Steelers because I do believe they're a playoff team. I don't think they're a division champion. Okay. So, Alan, um, who you got? I, I got the Jets. I got the I Jets. I fucking knew it. Fucking Jets. Okay. I like the idea have it so far. Fred has I'm every other go. team, and he's not going to. So I'm a, I'm, now I'm going to ride with you, man. I'm going to pick the Steelers. That's a wild card. Well, you were getting the Broncos. Son of a bitch. Yeah, why, why? you have to pick a different team because there's three wild card spots. I thought, no, I, it's what? It's three now? For the last two years. What did they do years. that shit? Oh my God. 
This is why. Please I told you. I told you. You the one wanted to do this. You the one wanted to do this. I told you. I told you. A month ago, we were having on the show. I'm like that ESPN commercial, but with the guy was yep. talking sports out of his ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fred, I like the ESPN commercial. Fred talks everything out of his ass. So, okay, That's Fred. So, it can't be the Steelers. It can't be the Jets. It can't be the Dolphins, Ravens, Jags, or Chiefs. Give us any other team. The Broncos, then. Come on. He's going Russell. I'm going to let Jack. Come on, Russell, Russell with your big I, nose. I, I, all right. Suck up all the wins out your nose. Suck up all the wins. Let's ride. Let's ride. I know. And that does leave, like you said, that leaves the Bengals. And, and the Bills Bills out of the playoffs. Yeah, I Jango, Bills, Bills, and Chargers. the Chargers. Yeah, Sierra's fine. Actually, it, I mean, I, I'm saying Jets, but I would think the Bengals. Are gonna, uh, but that's besides the point. I mean, I really Jets, do think Jets that, are a good pick too. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not against the Jets, but I do think the AFC North is probably arguably the best division in football. Uh, just North they're all East right there. They're so but, they're so top heavy, both of them. Yeah, and I mean, I, who knows I, what the Browns are going to be? So. I love them, top heavy. <laughs> Browns. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a Browns guy, but you know, whatever. Browns. We can't all, you know, we have to simply have to have at least acknowledge they exist for now. So, okay. So, on to our NFC picks. This should be probably not easier for us, but mm. <laughs> it should be easier. So, the you NFC East, Fred. Yep. Who you got? In the East. In the East. East. Do you know who's Philadelphia. in the East? Philadelphia. Look at that. The Eagles. Alan, who you got? Who else? You think it's Dallas? Not. You think it's going to be Man, Dallas? Man, I've never picked it's Dallas. Never gonna Dallas. It's never going to be Dallas. It's never going to be Dallas. Parts of me really want to mm, want yeah. Dallas to win. Tyler, not, looks, not, like, uh, Tyler, Tyler looks like he wants to stay Dallas. He looks That's like exactly how I felt. I think it's going to be so close. <laughs> Look at him. He wants to stay yeah. Dallas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On paper. Paper. Really good. Uh, hey, yeah, two years ago, the Browns on paper were like, for now, no. Yep. And look what happened. True. Yeah, and I, I, I played them with the Super Bowl. Ace is Ace is the the one that said it on the on the pod this week uh, that we just talked. I, I think there's good value in both the the Eagles and the, the Cowboys to win this division. I don't. I do think it's a two man race. I don't th- think there's much value at all in the Giants to win this division, and obviously the Washington Commanders are are far and behind from the rest yeah. of the three. Um, but personally. If you're going to take the Eagles at the minus, I'd put it with something else, but I do think you get good value with the Cowboys at the plus 195. Ace, I know you're pretty confident in these Cowboys as well as Mackie, uh, our other buddy that we do the podcast with. He's from New York, but he's a Cowboys fan. Uh, we don't <laughs> we don't know how it happened either. So, um, But yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll go with the Cowboys here at the, at the plus 195. The Cowboys fandom is a disease, man. Schedule favors the Cowboys. That Eagles right. they roll into a tough one after that Super Bowl hangover, too. Yeah. yeah, I agree. All right, Alan, it's up to you. We got to vote for the Eagles, a vote for the Cowboys. What do you do, Alan? Cowboys. What do you do? God damn it. What do love you it. do? Love that love pick. It. I knew we would. That Prescott season. Fuck it. All right, this one should be pretty. <laughs> I, I feel like this one should be easy, I, but it's not going to be easy. The NFC North. Fred, do you know who's in the NFC North? NFC North. Yes. That would be it. Damn it. Fuck. That team. Yep. Them Lions, I, Vikings, and Bears. Oh, my. Oh, my. There you go. Um, and the Packers, too. Dude, that's just. That's a hard one. Call, Those are shitty teams, man. I, they're I, all. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're all Detroit? shitty teams. I think they're all middle of the road to, like, pretty okay teams. Like, they, not they, shitty, except for the Packers. I'm going to go Bears. Oh wow! They got what's, what's the quarterback? Uh, Justin, Justin Fields. Fields. Justin Fields. Yeah, Justin Fields. Yeah, I'm gonna go Bears. Okay. Look at that going out on a limb. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go Bears. The Bears. <sighs> the Bears. I, I feel like it's gonna be. I, I, I would root for the Lions. I'm rooting for the Lions this year. Mm. First of all, because the Lions have always sucked, and secondly, because I feel like after the Vikings last year had so many like one score wins, they've got to regress to the mean. They're they're gonna be. I mean, they're still gonna be a good team, but I just don't. I, yeah. I don't know. Something tells me the Lions are are hot to trot this year. Alan, Alan Actually, wants to I, wait until our pros tell us what to do. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going with Freddie. I'm I'm going Bears. The Bears. Okay, I so Tyler, Bears. Ace, tell him why he's wrong. 
I love what the Bears did this offseason. I don't think they get to that division win just yet. I think they're a year or two away. They added on that defense Edmonds, um, some other big names late in free agency, veteran moves too. They got DJ Moore. Moore out of Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, finally, a real weapon. But I'm going to lean towards that a lot of unexpected things happening this year. I'm leaning towards the experience with the Vikings. I love Justin Jefferson. Kirk Cousins, best quarterback in the division, most established. A lot of guys that have been there and done that. So that's where I got to ride with. It's the safest play, I think. I can't see the other guys putting up double digit wins this season, even though the Lions will be must watch TV. I agree. The Lions are, I agree. The Lions are going to be an exciting team to watch. I think the experience with Cousins and the in the Minnesota Vikings gets to gets the division done. They they will win the division. I think there's great value in that as well. Uh, plus two ninety, so almost three to one there for the Vikings. Hold on, can I, can, I, can I just ask a question? I've been hearing you say it's plus ninety one ninety five, plus two ninety. What's that? What's that? What's so that? that's that's like when I say like three to one. Do you know what that means for the for the gambling? Yeah, if you bet a dollar, you get three dollars. Yeah, right. so yeah. plus so plus two ninety. That's basically two point nine to one. So if you put down a hundred bucks on that, you'd win two ninety. Right. Okay. I got you. Okay. So put down your money on the Sorry. Bears, friend. And I'm going to write, See, I'm typing You Bears think I'm in. betting money when I'm asking what the fucking he's talking about? I do think you're betting money. <laughs> I'm not, I hope I'm you are. I'm money. And I don't even know how much money I can get. If I'm going to bet some money, I'm going to be like, yo, I got $10 on the, and you give me 20 if I win. This is Vegas. the sharp stuff, this man. Vegas, this is like, yeah, yeah this you got to like. Shit, yeah. Well, I'm or like anywhere sports you know, game is legal, which is not man. here, of course. I shoot craps with Monopoly dice. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so, all right. So, I'm, I, God damn it, I hate being overruled and putting the bears there, but I guess we're going to do it because I said, who are you going for? Who, who was you going to I said, the, I think the, said lions the Lions are going to, I, I do honestly, yeah. okay, my height. brain says, my brain says Vikings, my heart says pick. Lions. It's a, it's a good pick. Right. But we're going to write bears because we promised we would do that. Justin Fields is really fan. good too. If he I makes know, that he's step, great. He he's it. great at fantasy. He sucks yeah. at real life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, NFC, it's that not that he work. sucks. It's not that he sucks. Like, he hasn't had the weapons. He's got. He does have See? better weapons this year than he's ever had. Right. And this is his year. They're going to be better than the Packers. Show improve. So we got that going for us. All right. So on to the NFC South. Yes. Yeah. Let's let's, let's get this moving, Fred. Who you got? Fred Carolina. knows the NFC South, of course. <laughs> Alan? Not Carolina. No, never Carolina. Carolina. I know it's not going to be Carolina, but I can't help but... It's got to be the Saints, you, man. You're going you're gonna to override me. Override Unless me. Unless Cam Newton walks out. There you go. Let's uh, go, Cam! I got to go Saints, personally. Um, but Alan is the Alan is the tiebreaker, so... Carolina, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go Falcons because, because I got family playing for the Falcons. Oh. Right? That's true, that's oh, true. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Who? Like, Alan's uh, little sister plays for the Falcons. Yeah, I'm a little <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, Start a quarterback? My, <laughs> my, my, my cousin's son. Defensive he tackle. Uh, <laughs> Ethan Greenridge, he plays for the Falcons. So. He's a lineman, oh, uh, reserve lineman. So, awesome. yeah. yeah. All right. I know you guys are going to say the smart money is on the Saints. Just yep. because of lack of talent across the board outside of the Saints. Yep. The exciting so, we, we team is the Falcons. There, the Falcons have so much potential, but their floor is so low on how yeah, they can perform. They're so unknown. The guys, Ritter, Robinson, Pitts, London—that whole offense is <coughs> one to two years into the league at most. Right. I like how they did use, defense. Sure. Drake London, Jesse you know, Bates, Jesse Bates, AJ Terrell, and Jeff Okuda is a valid secondary too. But you got to look at the Saints. They have the veteran experience. Yeah, I'm all over this Saints team. I think there's good value in them to win this division. So I love the Saints team. I think having oh, David you're, Carr you're, is a big. I've always David been a huge David brother. Carr. Yeah, fan. I have been a David big Carr's brother. Derek Carr. Oh, well, Derek Carr. Sorry, I've always been a big <laughs> Carr fan. Um, and uh, I, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. My brain's just as fried as his. So, uh, but okay. So, Fred, can I talk you in to the Saints? Hey. One of yeah, us has to change. Yeah, I'll, I'll go for the Saints. Also. Go March, I'm talking about. Yeah, the Saints. 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 Go. Bijan's going to be sick on the Falcons. Though. I'm excited to see Bijan this year. Like, but I'm also worried that the Falcons overall are just a trash pile. Bijan must. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what now. Ritter can do. <laughs> you see that? That's awesome. Bijan <laughs> mustard. 
That's Joke of the sponsored by mustard. Why not? Hey, sponsored time. by French's. Uh, so okay, so on to the NFC West, and we'll get this thing wrapped up here. Um, West. Who do you got, Fred? Me. You need in to the know West? Who's, yeah, you need to know who's NFC in the NFC West. West. Uh, so no, I know, I know. It's, and then um, nothing else. The, <laughs> the Seahawks, the Chargers. Right. Um, nope. Close. Chargers are in there? No, nope, they're in the AFC West. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Seahawks. Go ahead. Give it to me. Give it to me. 49ers. Man. There you go. Rams. 49ers. They got my man, Chris McCaffrey. They got the my Rammies man. Rammies and then the, the college football team that is the Arizona Card. They got my man, 49ers. They got Chris. Oh, Chris McCaffrey. You should be able to win anything with Chris McCaffrey. We didn't prove as, that. As long as it's a, not an injury. <laughs> <laughs> My wife brought me a jersey last year, and they fucking traded it. But I'm like, I'm that like, always you happens. Ever fucking Bobby shit. So Fred's been <laughs> Fred's been a Panthers fan pretty much since they came into the league. You know, it was '98 right. or whatever. I wasn't a football fan until they came into the league. And a buddy of ours has see. season tickets because it's only about an hour and a half. Uh, the Panthers team is only about an hour and a half from us. And so he would he had tendency to like, I'm not gonna make the game. Like, who wants a ticket? Like, you just give it to whoever, you know, because nobody really wants to go. Um, but Fred loved to go. And how many games in a row was it that you went to before you actually got to see them? Man, it was like eight? 15, 16 games? No, it was, it was more than that, man. It was. I was, it was, I was there when I was there Christmas Day when Julius Peppers blocked the blocked the uh field goal and they said he ran to the quarterback and then took that took that one away from me. I was Uh there opening day when Philly came in and just beat the (laughs) shit out of us. I mean I I've been through some shit up there at Bank of America Stadium, man. And and I did. I got I got to see him like first game I was there. I was like he had great seats too like three yards. Yeah. Three seats Three seats from like the field. 50 yard line. 50 like maybe, yard yeah. line. Six rows, seven rows up. That game, Chris McCaffrey right hurdled that dude. I was sitting right there and he he hurdled that dude right in front of us, man. And, and then I, he looked at Fred and was like, sorry, he buddy. He pointed at me and was like, really? <laughs> He's like, that's all I can do. <laughs> like, I can't do anything else. Okay. Yeah. So, with that being said, we got right. our Niners, Saints, Bears, and Cowboys. For our division champs, who you got for the wild card, Fred? Let's do the same thing we did before. Just pick one. Mm, Go, Dallas. They, Dallas is the champion. Oh, <laughs> so, no, no, did we pick Dallas? We didn't pick. We Dallas. did. We picked the Cowboys. So then throw the Eagles in there at that well, spot. The Eagles, yeah, the Eagles. The Eagles. Then I easy we pick. The off of that. No, we we didn't. Oh, fuck All right, I'm gonna the Vikings traitor. because I do feel like the Vikings are right there. Yeah. All right. Alan, who you got, buddy? I was gonna say I was gonna say Vikings. You have the tough pick. So pick another. I know. That's why I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and steal this pick. <laughs> All right, if Alan takes the Vikings, I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna go out on the Oh, I'm no, gonna go no, Lions. no, no, no. Go Lions. Okay. I'm gonna go Lions. I wanna say oh. Seahawks. I think it's between the Lions and the Seahawks. Yeah. yeah I, I, like know, I, I do like the Seahawks. I've been to their stadium. Have you? Been in their stadium. Yeah, it was it was during baseball season, but I went in the stadium and they didn't give me You were the twelfth man. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was the last man. They were, I was like, Where the fuck? Why, why am I in here? So it was great. Um, all right. Coin flip, Fred. Yep. Seahawks or Lions? Go. Seahawks. All right. Seahawks it is. All right. Gino Smith. So, I like Gino Smith, man. You got to root for Gino Smith, even if you're a Jets fan. Yeah, WVU product. Good to see him bounce back. Up, yeah. got, that's our product. Didn't he get punched in the face the last time he, he was got in his, the Jets? His, uh, yeah, his jaw got broken. Yeah. Ooh. My steamy. Damn. Good times. Yeah, All right, Fred. Never a good luck. So who do you have coming out of the NFC? Here's our here's our breakdown. Here's our bracket for the NFC. Cowboys, Bears, Saints, 49ers, Eagles, Vikings, or Seahawks? Atlanta. What the shit? Who do you have winning the NFC playoffs? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain's fucking fried, man. Say it again. Yeah, dude. Bears. <laughs> Uh, bears, uh, that's worse than Atlanta. Lions. You should have just stuck with the fucking Falcons. Falcons. We don't even have them in the playoffs. We can't pick a team to win the NFC. That's don't ask me questions, game. Matt. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take. I, I think it comes down to the Eagles or the Cowboys. There you go. 
I think those are probably the odds on two best teams. The 49ers, of course, will be there. But I just don't know. I, I feel like the 49ers are yearly bit by some sort of injury bug. Mm-hmm. And I don't know who. I mean, I, I can't trust Sam Darnold to take them if something happens to Brock Hurdy. Brock Hurdy. <laughs> So, Alan, who you got? I'm going to say you give you the choice between the Eagles and the Cowboys. Eagles and the Cowboys? Yeah, who you got? I was going to pick the Saints, but uh, to win the whole the, to, to go to the Super Bowl. I, I just, just said, said that about an hour and a half. Oh my ago. god! My yeah, be nuts. Say, you know, because they come into the wild card and then they just get that se- that second win and win it all. Yeah, I love that. You like it, Fred? We'll go with it. Fuck it. It's I never going to happen, it. but why not? It's, no, nobody else not. will have it. That's a good thing. Oh, just your legs on the line. Have it. It's for <laughs> it's just, your legs. just your legs, Fred, on the line. He don't make his legs. <laughs> All right. So for the AFC, you got Dolphins, Ravens, Chiefs, Jaguars, Steelers, Jets, or Broncos. Chiefs. How can I not I, bet on the I Chiefs? I hate to agree, but I completely agree. How can I not bet on the Chiefs? I want to go with the Jaguars. Patrick Mahomes, mama back. loves him. The next step, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I think. Good. I think that they're going to get to the championship game, but I don't know if they'll be have enough to beat the Chiefs, especially if it's in the kingdom. Right. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go Chiefs because why everyone's doing that? You know what? You're right, Alan. Fuck it. We're going to go Jaguars. You got to. Like that's it. how you win these things. We got to win. Yeah, We've got to swing for the fences, baby. There you go. So. Just what all the what every pundit had predicted going into the season a Jaguar State Super Bowl. Jesus, low mark. <laughs> yeah, the like the least watched Super Bowl since it wasn't televised. So, all right. So uh, between the Jaguars and the Saints, Fred, who you got? Jaguars and Saints. Saints. Yeah, gotta go with the NFC South. Stay loyal. Alan, uh, I'm gonna go Jaguars. I'm gonna go Jaguars too. We're we're calling Jaguars. Man, our Trevor chance. Lawrence breakout. I always here. get out voted. Wait, that's how voting works. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how the voting works. All right, so rapid fire. We're gonna rely. I'm gonna rely completely on you guys, Tyler and Ace, from our friends at the Hit the Books podcast. Please check them out. Obviously, they are so much better at this than we are. So yes. uh, we're gonna rapid fire these. We're just gonna go with what you guys say and trust you to be smarter than us. MVP. <laughs> Hoff, you oh. take this one. So, a guy that I have my eyes on here, I'll try to keep it as quick as possible. Two no, you're guys. good. I just, I just don't want to waste you guys' time is all. Yeah, no, yeah, you're, you're right. all good. You're all good. We um, have all the time in the world to waste. <laughs> have to go to work tomorrow. So, one, <laughs> one guy that I got my eye on coming into this season, just for the value behind it, uh, not necessarily a common pick, but it's going to be Justin Herbert for the LA Chargers. I think there's good value on him. A pass-heavy offense, an offense that got reworked. They got Eckler back. I'm not big on Brandon Staley as the head coach over there for the Chargers, but I can see Justin Herbert kind of similar put-up numbers to what we've seen Aaron Rodgers in the past in the regular season where he gets it done in the regular season, but not necessarily in the playoffs. Not big on this Chargers team to go far in the playoffs this year if they even make it. Tough division, tough AFC conference, but I think Justin Herbert could take home an, uh, an MVP. I think there's a lot of value behind that. I love that pick. We're I love that pick it. off. Um, the only other person I would have, obviously, go with that Lamar one. But Jackson. if you want to double down, I had it uh, written down plus 1,600 Trevor Lawrence to take home the MVP. If he's getting you that Super Bowl win, he's right. doing that. Right. True. Um, that's a good point. If you're doubling right, down, that's the way to do it. Who you want, Herbert or Lawrence? Uh, who, me? Yeah. Oh. Fred, Me? yeah, <laughs> Freddie was like, "Oh, Herbert, I'm not." You were, home. you were just chilling. I don't know what you were saying. Yeah, I was. Head. He was like Bill right. Cosby. So, yeah. offensive player of the year. Uh, I'm. I agree that I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be in the running for it for sure. Um, but I don't know. I don't know who. I'd go non QB here. I'm looking at Tyree Kill. I think he might lead the league in receiving this year with a healthy Tua Tagovailoa. If they're going to have any success winning the AFC East, Tyreek, he's at plus 2,000 odds. So that's some crazy betting odds for you, too. But um, everybody's pretty high for this award, but it's mostly non quarterback players that take this one home. I have no yeah, I, lo- I like that Tyreek Hill pick. I also think, uh, obviously, I think he won it last year was the Justin Jefferson uh, duo up there. He has a Kirk Cousins going on. So Justin Jefferson or Tyreek Hill. But uh, I also, I, I'm big on this Dolphins team this year, so I like that Tyreek Hill pick a lot. All right, Alan, Justin Jefferson or Tyreek Hill? Uh, Tyreek. All right, he said Tyreek. He's the only one he Tyreke. can pronounce. 
So, <laughs> defensive player of the year. I would like to throw in my vote for Minka Fitzpatrick. Hmm. Hoff's going to love that. I like that as a Steeler guy. My pick is my pick is he's the odds on favorite right now, but I think he's going to get one sooner or later. I called it last year, so I'm going to ride with it again this year because he was hurt a bit last year. That's Micah Parsons down in Dallas to get oh, his. Man. I think his time's coming. Uh, Garrett, Bosa, all those other guys have already Watt have been in the spotlight. I think Parsons is going to have a full healthy season and bring those Cowboys success like we talked about. Yeah, I agree. I think I like that Parsons pick and the guy that I think is going to be right there with him, if not, could win it as well and take home another one is TJ Watt, my Pittsburgh Steeler. Uh, sure. Plus 850, there's great value there. I saw an interview. He was on the Pat McAfee show last week. He's coming into the season feeling better and healthier than ever. And when you hear the heartbeat of your defense say that coming into the season gives me all the right. all the good things to feel coming into the season as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. So uh, I think either way, Micah Parsons or TJ Watt, you got a good you got a good pick for defensive player of the year there. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take the the pick on this one. I'm taking TJ Watt. So I want to take Michael Parsons because I know he's been going crazy. He's moved down to the defensive end position where he's gonna smoke everybody that he goes up against. But I feel like TJ Watt is my homer pick since I only get one. <laughs> so, so, all right. So I feel like this. Either. No, no, I'm cool with that. I feel like this is gonna be a pretty easy one. I think we've already spoken about him a couple of times. Offensive rookie of the year. I think yep. it's Bijan. Yep. Jameer Gibbs can press him for it. I don't see any receiver, especially with JSN going down with the injury. Right. Um, I think Gibbs with the timeshare with Montgomery kind of scares me a bit. Robinson's going to get fed in the ATL, and that's a weak division. He's going to put up numbers. I couldn't agree. Right. Bijan's my pick for this one. Easy enough. All right, defensive rookie of the year. I, I have a, I have a homer pick here, so I want to hear what Huff says first. I like – so there's the top two dudes with Will Anderson, obviously defensive guy that was taken off the board going to Houston. He's going to have a lot asked of him uh, down there to be the the main guy, the you know the signal caller in that defense, uh, being a rookie. The one guy I like is Jalen Carter, the Georgia Bulldog, the back-to-back national champion. I like him to step into this Philadelphia Eagles defense and cause some serious problems for them. The one thing that scares me with Jalen Carter is how much talent's around him on that Eagles defense, though. Sure. Um, is he really going to be the sole spotlight guy to steal that award like Sauce Gardner did last year? Kind of brings me to my point here with Christian Gonzalez. I know it's tough for a DB to take home the award because you have to be on lock, but in a Patriots defense that complements him well, I think he might be able to put up those big numbers in the spotlight against teams like the Jets, Bills, and Dolphins. All right. Fred, who you got? Four. Oh, Sports? Uh, okay. <laughs> what what Huff said? I got the guy. Huff was talking about Jalen Carter. Gotcha. Jalen Carter. There you go, Carter. The Georgia Bulldogs, friend. There you go. Ugh. I knew it wasn't like that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make this one, I think, hopefully, probably easy. Comeback player of the year. Is it Russell Wilson or is it Damar Hamlin? It's Damar Hamlin. Yeah, as much as I'm a Russ guy, this is this has NFL script all over it. They want right. to see Demar Hamlin touch a field, and if you can if you can wire some money, that that's I mean Demar Hamlin's winning comeback player of the year. Yeah, I mean I think is, there's that, really- that, is that the uh, the Bills player? Yeah, that's yeah, the guy who yeah. literally died uh, on the field. Died on the year. field. He came back yeah. to play this year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like nothing embodies yeah. the. I mean, how literally right. what, he came back from death. They shouldn't let that back boy play. play. They should not what? let that boy play. That's, that's, Dude, that was such a freak accident, man. That stuff doesn't happen. I mean, like that—that well, that doesn't happen. It fucking literally happened. <laughs> okay, but that okay, that doesn't happen that often. How about that? It fucking happened. You know what I'm saying? If, if it happens again, Fred, this year I'll eat my hat. If well, <laughs> and salt and pepper on it. Hat. I, I'm gonna use <laughs> the seasoning that you are, Fred. There you go. All right, so that'll that'll bring us to our last category, and then we'll let you guys get out of here. Uh, Coach of the year. Oof, I had this Oof. It was a rough Oof. one. Who are you looking at? Go ahead. I was, I was looking- gonna say, Ace, who you got here? This is a this is one I wasn't necessarily prepared for. I can definitely think of an answer here though. Go ahead. It was crazy when I was looking at it because my He's pick wasn't like one of the top guys on the no no Belichick already <laughs> has the greatest coach of all time accolade. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I think, what, Ten plus rings gets you enough of that, but Enough of that. Um, going back in, not a guy that's at the top of the list. I have Kyle Shanahan. I really think the Niners run the table in the NFC this year. I think they put up somewhere like 14, 15 wins and have a crazy season as they have that vengeance after losing to the Eagles. So I like Shanahan here. Um, but Hoff, what are you thinking? 
Uh, the one, the one that I had my eyes on that uh, before, as soon as you said that, I'm thinking Sean Payton. See if he can step in with this Denver Broncos team and turn them yeah. around. I think uh, I was big on them last year, and they just couldn't get the signal caller right with Hackett as the head guy. And I don't know if any. I was saying this to them earlier on our show. I don't know if anyone's watched Hard Knocks or not, but when I see clips of that Nathaniel Hackett guy talking to Rodgers, I'm just like, this guy can't be a head coach of a football team. But I'm gonna go Sean Payton here. I think Sean Payton has some uh, some real ability to turn that Broncos team around, and I think that's kind of where you could get that value with the Russell Wilson comeback player of the year. He's right, going to turn right. Russell around, but I don't think Russell wins that award, but I do think Sean Payton could take on this award for sure. All right, Alan, we're leaving the last one up to you. Who you got? I have no idea. Sean Payton it is. Yep, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Whatever Alan does now, so we just go with the last one. That's his. That's there you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a Super Bowl like, to his name, know. too. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's easier to type Peyton than Shanahan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he, he's going to win. Well, hey, uh, Ace Tyler, thank you guys again so much for coming on. We would love to have you on anytime, uh, maybe around playoff time or, or really anytime, um, maybe World Series, because there's nothing going on there in that time of the year. Um, but if you guys are from the Hit the Books podcast, Alan put the graphic up, check them out. Uh, I'm sure that their insight is much more in depth than we have allowed them to be because right. we're just idiots and we're just kind of. I can't, I can't wait to air. see you guys like on ESPN 8. Like <laughs> the Ocho, the Ocho, the Ocho. Right. Corn, yeah. cornhole in depth statistics. Gotcha. <laughs> we were going to ask for some, we had some random prop bets we were going to uh, throw at you guys, but. I, I, it's too much. So, <laughs> so we'll leave it. Uh, we'll leave it at this. And like I said, you guys are welcome to come on anytime. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. We had a great right, time. Hey, and uh, if we win, we will, you know, we'll buy you a beer. If we lose, you can break Fred's legs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, either way, it's a win for you guys. Yeah, I love it. Well, thanks again for having us on. Uh, we appreciate it. We'll definitely have to do this again. You know, you guys are great. I appreciate it. It was a good time. So anytime we can sit down and talk sports with the buddies, it's always a good time to me. So thank you so much. Again, please feel free to plug the show again, and uh, and then we'll, we'll get out of here. Books. Yeah, absolutely. So we record we record every Wednesday. Episodes release every Thursday going through the NFL slate, college football slate, what's going on in all the other sports world, uh, NBA, NHL, college basketball, college football, MLB, the whole nine yards. We take care of it. So uh, and as the bigger uh, golf events come up, UFC fights, we even dabble in those events, too. So uh, definitely not some content to add to your sports world rotation. Uh, hit the books podcast all available everywhere. Um yeah, that's really it. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for so much for having cool. us on. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, have a good one. We'll, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very appreciate much. it. Awesome. All right. We'll be right back. The Black Lincoln Collective Podcast will return after a word from our sponsors. Do you want to make money watching sports for free? What if I told you that you can receive weekly plays in the NFL from gambling experts delivered right to your phone for no charge at all? Check out Hit the Books podcast, the premier sports gambling podcast that releases episodes every Thursday to get you ready for the NFL week ahead and the rest of the sports world. Give us a follow on social medias at hitthebooks.pod. Are you ready for football season? Are you ready to hit the books? Welcome back to the Black Link Collective Podcast. We are so glad you're still with us. Of course, we just said goodbye, and Alan gave the boot to Ace and Tyler from the Hip of the Books Podcast. Uh, they are way more knowledgeable about sports and gambling than we will ever be. Ever. Thank you for that, ever Alan. Be. Ever, ever. But they're like, oh, it's eight plus four and a half. And I'm like, yeah, that's I didn't. what I had to ask. How do they just know that shit? I don't know. Got me. I don't know either. Well, Fred. I'm pretty yeah. bummed out, buddy. This Aww. week we we are trying our best not yeah. to like do this. Like, oh, we're all about we're the fucking death show. I know, right? But we always- all celebrities keep on dying, and yeah, one of our know. favorites, one of my favorites of all time, yeah. unfortunately, picked the bucket this week uh, in in Bob Barker. Bob, Bob Barker. Bob Barker. 
R.I.P. Bob is what Alan would say, and that is what he said. Hey. So we'll keep it brief because I know that he's getting a lot of press from a lot of people, right. um, which he totally deserves because he's a national treasure. Right? He I, I is. He's right up there with Betty White, who he feuded with for a number of years, by the way. Really? Yeah, they weren't fans of each other, which is she very interesting. That pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I she feel just, like, yeah. She, she, didn't want, she just wanted to spade and neuter him. <laughs> She was anti-animal, and he was pro-animal. No, I don't know. But, but uh, yeah, of course, Bob Barker, we all know him from The Price is Right. Uh, he started yeah. that on Fred. Yeah. Would you, like, would you care to guess the date he started The Price is Right? Uh, it's going to be very say, familiar to you. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. September the 4th? September the 4th. What year? Really? 1952. No, closer no. to your birthday. 1975? 77. 1972. 72. Wow. September 4th, 1972 is the premiere of The Price is Right on CBS with Bob Barker. Really? Before that, from 1969 to 1988, he emceed the New Year's Day Tournament of Roses Parade. He also hosted Miss Universe and the Miss USA Beauty Pageants, as well as he had he was had his own radio show, The Bob Barker Show, which was way more popular than ours. And he also hosted the game, the TV game show, Truth or Consequences. Truth or Consequences, yeah, yeah. So of course he he won. It, it, honestly, let's be honest, probably Many the Emmys. best fight scene of all time yes. in any movie of any sort. And you can say just comedy, but I say any movie. Yeah. And for his role in Happy Gilmore, where he beat the shit out of Adam Sandler, better than Rocky. No, oh, way better. I would rather watch that a hundred times than watch Rocky once. <laughs> and of course, he was also a huge, uh, a huge advocate for animals. Yeah. He ended every show with you know spay and neuter your pets. Spay and neuter your pets. And overall, honestly, man, I mean, he lived to be ninety nine. There's really not much you can say. He was the man. He got close to a hundred as he could, right? He did. Not going, going over, over as they said. Not going over, <laughs> as they've all said. So, R.I.P. Bob Barker. Uh, you will not be forgotten. Rip. I've spayed and neutered all my pets because of you. He was also and vegetarian, Fred. Did you know that? Did he? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. They even, Drew Carey uh, sucks. Drew Carey does suck comparatively. He does. Right. Yeah, I comparatively, agree with you. Yeah. comparatively, like, there's no. I completely agree. I hate Man, that. I remember, like, having to stay home from school and, like, yeah. Grandma would watch Bob and, and then the soap operas. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? He is, my, he is my all time oh. second favorite uh, game show host. Second favorite? Yes. Behind. Ooh. And this is going to be. No, no. This is going to be a little, like, possibly heart wrenching. But. <laughs> RuPaul? No. Uh, Pat Sajak. Because. <laughs> really? a fortune paper. Because when I was a kid, I was from yeah. a broken home. Right. I came from a broken home, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> and Pat Sajak, you know, back in the grainy days of television in the 80s, yeah. looked, had like a passing, bore a passing resemblance to my dad, oh, who was no. gone. Oh, oh, um, you, if you listen, you'll hear this. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. And so I would watch Wheel of Fortune just to feel like love of a father. Oh, my God. I'm serious. He did. He looked that a lot like my dad. That is he so was sad. I told you it was borderline sad. That is bad. It was true. That's like I, felt, I would sad. watch it because I was like, "Is that my daddy?" Like, did I? <laughs> and then Dana White was from up the road, you know, from us. Yeah, so I was Myrtle like, this Beach. "Could be, yeah. could be, could be my daddy." Oh, it wasn't man. my daddy, so, but yeah. So I know that's that's weird. Daddy, daddy, this is daddy. So, uh, so yeah, R.I.P. Unfortunately, yeah. to uh, to our old buddy, friend of the show. Yep. Bob Parker. Why not? Because he can't say anything about it now. He would have loved us. He would have. His he old probably would beat the shit out of all three of us. But all, oh yeah, and we don't let him. I don't let him. Yeah, same. I don't let him. Come on. So yep. Fred, it's from the dead that we <laughs> must that we appreciate our lives, and that we. This is how we we you know that's yeah. the, the the knowledge that at some point will all be gone is what makes life so precious. And that's why they call it the present. Yes. And Fred, it's a gift. Like a present. Fred. Exactly. It's a gift. It's a gift. Exactly. And so, Fred, yep. in order to celebrate your promotion to house husband, <laughs> um, and of course, also your birthday, which is uh, today. Today, we've got some, it, some fun birthday facts okay. for Fred. So, hey. everyone, Fred's fucking birthday facts. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. That's pretty good. 
Uh, that's better than our our last week's show. Uh oh. But he's not doing the facts because it's his birthday. It's not my birthday. It's my birthday. Yeah. Buckets. Buckets. Uh, so yeah, Fred, congratulations for being born on September 4th, 1976. Boom, boom, boom. That, is the, uh, in, that was the 248th day of the year in the 1976 Gregorian calendar. Oh. Uh, and that means that there were only 118 days remaining until the end of the year. Oh. Fred, do you know what day you were born on, what the day of the week was? Because I can I tell think, you. I think it was a dark and cloudy Saturday. It was a Saturday. And <laughs> it was a it, Saturday. And it rained and thundered for the 10 minutes before and the three minutes after you were born. <laughs> and the world was cast into shame. And the exact moment that you came shadow. out, it was they exploded. The, uh, as, soon as, as soon as you came out, Canadian Airlines had their biggest uh, crash to date. Oh so, my unfortunately. God. <laughs> so, Fred, if you uh, were, there really, to, were there a plane crash on my birthday? Nine, nine people died. Um, so, thanks for that. So a person born on this day, of course, will be 46 years old, which you are. Uh, and no, Fred, no. well, 47 years old. I don't know how but fucking old you are. I was about to say, you're going to give me a year back. I'll take I'm it. I'm trying. Uh, you, don't, you don't look a day over 46. Thank you. So, And if you, Fred, had you started when you were three and say 50 cents a day, do you know how much money you would have right now? No, I don't. I don't want to know. That's it's not as much as you think. Oh, okay, good. Tell yeah, me. you would have fifty three million dollars. Oh! <laughs> no, you would have eight thousand and thirty three dollars and fifty cents. Okay, you say fifty better. cents a day that's, for your you entire got life. Me. I was like, really? like fifty cents. Holy shit! Really? Oh, you haven't been on like that long, Fred. You would only have to live one hundred and ten million years for that. Yeah, to well, stop it. So, and Fred, just so you know, if you were born in Japan. Well, then the day of the week that you were born would not have been Saturday. It would have been Doyobi. Doyobi. Which is how you say Saturday in Japanese. Doyobi. So that that said, I have a few historical facts Mm -hmm. that I just can't wait for you to tell me all about. Okay. you apparently. Right. First of all, like we said, Price is Right started a mere three or four years, four years before you were born. That's right. So your parents probably may have knocked it out to that. And that might be what started you. So hey, I'm just saying it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. In 1957, Fred, the Ford Motor Company introduced the Edsel, an automobile brand that later becomes one of the biggest marketing failures in history. Uh, so much like, <laughs> like me. <laughs> I was going to say you share failure with Ford Motor Company. No, I'm kidding. So on a science standpoint, Fred, <laughs> Yeah. In 1807, Robert Fulton Steamboat, the North River Steamboat, made its first successful trip to New York from New York to Albany. Which his is last like name was Steamboat. Half. Roger Fulton is his name. Oh, Roger, you said Roger Fulton Steamboat. He I thought he was Fulton. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's <laughs> <laughs> granddaddy. Ricky the Dragon's granddaddy. They named it after him. They named Steamboat after him. Uh, but yeah, from New York to Albany, which is literally like 50 feet. So I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but I'm going to assume it is. Yeah. So um, also in 1894, Antoine Becquerel discovers radioactivity while working oh. with uranium salts. So he uh, died. Probably died. You. If he died. Mostly because of you. Uh, in in 19, thank you, Val. In 1951, <laughs> the first live transcontinental television broadcast takes place in the United States, showing. Do you, know, do you know who the president was in 1951, Fred? Uh, Eisenhower. No, it was Truman, no. right? Truman, that's correct. Truman, Harry hey. Truman's speech. So it was the Truman Show. Yeah, it was the Truman Show. The same day that The Price Is Right <laughs> debuted, the Pioneer Ten becomes the first spacecraft to travel through an asteroid belt. Ooh, unsuccessfully. No, it was successfully. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. And then, uh, of course, politically speaking, and this is what Star we're really about. <laughs> In 476, which this probably had a lot to do with you, uh, Romulus Augustus, the last Roman emperor, is deposed by Odiaser, a Germanic chieftain. Yeah. I like that. I do. And uh, in 1781, a mere 198 years before you were born, or 95 years, the Los Angeles 
Pobladores, a group of 44 settlers from Mexico, established the town of El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora La Reina de Los Angeles de Porcupina. I thought, I, I thought it was a basketball team. Would you like me to read it again? Probably worse. Uh, they established the town of El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora La Reina de Los Angeles de Porcupina. Porc- Why don't they? Why they got to be so? Porcupina. Penin- I'm Porc- sure it's peninsula. Porcupina. How do you say peninsula in Spanish, Alan? Porcupina. Porcupina. Which later became the city of Los Angeles. Is it? Oh, yeah. L.A. on my birthday. That's right. And also, Fred, in 1957, yeah. Arkansas Governor Orville Faubus that called out a- the National Guard to prevent the integration of Little Rock Central High School, leading to the oh, Little Rock me. Nine crisis. It was and you me. were one of the reasons. I was. Yeah. They wouldn't let and me of course, in school. And, of course, you were there in 1985. When yep. the Akil Lauru cruise ship is hijacked by Palestinian terrorists in the Middle Eastern Sea or the Mediterranean <laughs> Sea. I was on the boat. Yeah. Right. He was like, Where are all the white women at? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was safe, though, because they don't take black hostages. <laughs> That's true. That's true. He our, knew value, it. our value is minus 290. <laughs> so like you, yeah, it's minus two two nine. You're out. We buddy. we see no value in this man. Right. So, uh, Fred, do you re- do you remember the great year of our Lord, 1995? Yeah, man, it's great year. Do you remember what debuted on your birthday in 1995? September fourth, 1995. 1995. 1995. No, I don't. No one told me life was gonna be this way. Friends, the sitcom Friends, really? on NBC, captivating oh, audiences and becoming yeah. one of the most popular TV shows of all time. Thanks white a lot, TV Fred. White right, TV white shows. TV shows. And Fred, would you like yep. to know a few people that you uh, share your birthday with? Sure. How about your old buddy Ivan Pavlov, the Russian oh. psychologist and Nobel <laughs> laureate, the, with the dogs, was known for his work on classical yeah, conditioning with the dogs, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah, as, soon as, you hear the bell, as soon as we hear the bell, we just assume the show's over. Um, so, of course, Joanne Nathan, American cookbook author and television personality, specialized in Jewishing or er, specializing in Jewish cuisine. Jewishing, Jewishing food, fish, his fish, delicious. Uh, Tom Watson was born on your birthday, American professional golfer and winner of eight major championships. Yeah, I did know that. I did know Tom Watson. All right. How about this one? I bet you didn't know this one. Which right. one of the Wayans brothers is born on your birthday? Damien. Nope. But close. <laughs> really? Well, Damon. Keenan? Damon. Damon. No, it's Damien. <laughs> Not it's Damien, Damon. Damon. It's Damon. Damon Waynes. Damon, Damon Waynes, American actor, comedian, yeah. writer for his nose on In Living Color and Lethal Weapon. <laughs> I get and it. Then, Three steps with a twist. And then, of course, Fred, in 1981, yes, your absolute Michael. favorite, the girl oh, that yeah. you're so excited that you share your Ooh, birthday with. Oh, booty, booty, booty rocking The everywhere. one and only, uh, put a ring on it, singer. Don't Beyonce say. Knowles. American Don't singer, say. songwriter, and actress, recognized one of those influential women in the music industry. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. So, Fred, I'm not going to tell you the people who died on your birthday because that's uh, impressive. We've already gone through this. No, there were some cool people that died on my birthday. No, there really weren't. There were. <laughs> right. Okay. Alan Wilson, American musician and co founder of the blues rock band Canned Heat. Harriet Monroe, American poet and founder of Poetry Magazine. Richard Burbage, <laughs> English actor and member of Lord Chamberlain's Men. Uh, Mel Appleby, English singer and member of the duo Mel and Kim, known for their hit song in the 80s. They don't name the song because you should know it. And of course, Anita Page, American <laughs> actress and one one of the last surviving silent film stars, best for her, uh, <laughs> her best known for her role in Broadway Melody. So, no, Fred, like, let me. I say like Betty White about that. I don't know. Don't Rivers no, died on my birthday. She died. Betty White died on like <laughs> December thirtieth. No. Yeah. Joan Rivers died on my birthday. Joan Rivers did die on your birthday. That's correct. Joan Rivers died on my birthday. And Steve Irwin point. died on my birthday. That's Steve true. Irwin Steve Irwin did birthday. die. So see, you love out the coolest people. You was all these. No, I like putting the the nerds in there. Yeah, it's a science show, man. <laughs> <laughs> all the nerds. <laughs> I'm only thinking about the nerds. You love out the coolest. Well, fucking, what's his name? Was a nerd. 
Yeah. Steve Irwin, he was just a cool ass nerd. No, he was Irwin's cool. He was a cool nerd. nerd. Yeah, yeah, he was, was a cool, cool nerd. nerd. I'll give him credit. He's like one of the and Joan nerd. Rivers is one of the funniest women of all time. Yes, dude. Right. Yeah. That was very, very good stuff. Hank, Hank, so, Hank the Angry Dwarf died on my birthday. I I unfortunately don't know who that is, but he sounds really. Yeah, I just, he seems like somebody I like. Really angry short. and short. <laughs> yeah, <I love laughs> Tattoo that. died on my birthday. Oh no, tattoo. Wow. That's sad. Tattoo. The plane, boss. The plane. The plane to the plane. Him. <laughs> right. He got to the plane. He probably died on the plane. He probably died on the plane. He could have died there. He got taken to the plane to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so Fred, the happy forty something birthday. The dude who shot Ricky in Boys in the Hood died on my birthday. And you the one did. that uh Doughboy killed? At the Yeah, end? well, the the one the one who hung out the car with the double barrel shotgun. Yeah, yeah he, he died on my birthday. Yeah, he had a good death. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh hey, also Ricky! on your birthday, Fred. Kelly Clarkson became the first winner of the reality show American Idol. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. American oh, swimmer Mark Spitz won his seventh gold medal during the Munich Olympic Games. <laughs> that's how I celebrated my birthday that year. With Mark Spitz. That's sad. He don't swallow. He spits. <laughs> he doesn't swallow. Yeah. <laughs> right, and of course, kind of <laughs> and of course, none of us can forget French author and diplomat Francois Auguste René, Victor hey, de Chaberon, who was the right. country's first romantic writers and France's preeminent literary figure in the early I love his century. Books. Like, I love his books. Yeah, big fan of uh, big fan. Francois Auguste René. Yeah, yeah. René. We love him all the way. Can't wait to have him on the show. Got what says that. <laughs> he, died. he was born in 1768, so he's probably not around anymore. But maybe next week you can read us uh, an excerpt from one of his books. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll French. have to write down his name. So I have yeah. to learn that first. That's right. You just need to learn a little French, just a little French. A little French. Just enough to read five pages bon, bon. from a book. Yeah. Bon, bon. That's right. You got time to learn. Yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me dust off my Rosetta Stone. <laughs> This is really, I'm sorry, Freddie. I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, we're sorry for all the <laughs> unemployment humor. It's okay, I'm telling you. you got it, it is what it is. You know what, Make Fred? Sometimes Fred. when a door closes, a window opens. There you go. And I'm going to climb right through it and steal all your <laughs> shit. Especially yeah, if you, you live in Russia. And <laughs> when are you leaving for work out. tomorrow? <laughs> Listeners, when do you leave for work in the morning? And what's your yeah. address? Just curious. Ah. Feel free tweet to tweet us. the show. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know of any job openings, tweet the X show. Us, and don't, Freddy. Tra- don't tweet us. We got an X now. Yeah, X, X it up, baby. Yeah, that's X right. Up. I can't it's wait. Fixed, well, though. Fred, happy birthday to you from the show. Thank you. We're so thankful that you're one of us, and we're so thankful that you're going to have a lot more time one to come up us. with segments. One of us. Enjoy. Now you could really devote your life to the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's been we go Fred's that. freaking birthday facts, dude. Okay, if you come up, if you spend one minute working on this show now that you don't have a job, I will be oh. shocked. Okay, come do it, man. I believe in you. No, I, that, I do believe in you. That's right. I believe in you forever, Fred. Viva la Fred. That's right. Viva la Fred. Fred's gonna be back and better than ever in a mere hours. He'll probably have a job before the show even airs. Probably. I got it. Happy Labor Day. Thank you guys for coming on. Thank you again to our buddies at the Hit the Books podcast, Ace and Tyler. We'll get the other two on at some point soon. And uh, we're going to rock and roll our way out of here and on to a beach. What do you do on Labor Day? Look out. It's the end of summer. The end of summer. Thank God. Yeah. It's the last time you can wear. Yeah. It's the last time to wear white. Oh, dude. Guess what? My sandals broke today. So oh, I'm pretty sad. Well, I'm glad summer's ending. That's it. It's in the summer. Fuck summer. Yeah. I'm a 75 degree slut. Yeah, me too. Let's go. Let's get dirty. Let's get dirty and dirty and dirty and cuddle nasty. up, baby. Real freaking nasty. Time to cuddle up with some ladies. <laughs> More likely, my wife and kids. <laughs> It's gonna be awesome. She's gonna fucking drink a thousand pumpkin spices. Because <laughs> that happened. That happened this week. That's the show. Should have led oh, the show yeah. with that. Yeah. And she was like, "Oh look, look what's back." And I was like, "I didn't know it ever left." 
pumpkin because spice. I don't like pumpkin spice. I don't give a shit about it, but it's very popular this time of year. It is. And it's 96 degrees outside. And people are drinking fucking pumpkin spice, which doesn't have pumpkin in it, by the way. No, it doesn't. Just saying. White people. But, um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is 100%. It's 100% white people. It's not. I've never seen a person of color. <laughs> hey, of you any gotta, color. You got to admit, that's the, that's the hell of a marketing campaign, man. Pumpkin sure. Spice got a hell of a marketing yes. campaign. Yeah, they're like, let's God, call it pumpkin dog. spice. And there won't even be any pumpkin in it, and we'll take the world by storm. Yep. If somebody actually had to drink something with pumpkin in it, they would hate it because pumpkin yeah. is disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Unless yeah, it's most people, that, most people that like pumpkin that spice thing don't like pumpkin pie. Right. Oh, I don't like pumpkin, yeah, pie. pumpkin pie. It's disgusting. See, and I'm the opposite. I like pumpkin pie, but only if it's smothered in pounds and pounds of whipped cream. Yes, mm-hmm. me too. No. See, sweet Wait potato, you don't need that. You don't need uh, all that whipped cream. Pie. You, don't, you don't need it. You don't need all that whipped cream. No, because sweet potato pie is good on its own. But yeah, yeah. Pumpkin pie is it needs it needs it needs a little white on it. You get the pumpkin pie. You get the pumpkin, pumpkin pie. So thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back next week with a brand new show. Some people. Hopefully, we all make it. Um, and <laughs> we'll see you soon. Pumpkin <laughs> pumpkin pumpkin pie. Be a, see you later. Right. <laughs> Be a pumpkin pie you later. No, I'm going <laughs> to cut that shit out. <laughs> Be old your resume. <laughs> <laughs>